I know you guys can't see the whole thing and I'm gonna have to work out a way to make sure that the camera is actually pointed at the parts I'm working on and I'm gonna start down here so I do need to adjust this which I should have done beforehand Man, I should bring it in closer though let's see interesting thing having to try to figure this out and turn I'm trying to get a decent line of sight here while I'm inking so you guys can see the detail work I'm doing oh you could uh OBS. It doesn't have a physical. Go to. Uh, I know how to zoom in, dude, but it doesn't it doesn't have a physical zoom, does it? Does it have a physical zoom? Yeah. You can turn your white balance up and down. I know there's things you can do. Ugh! Don't do that. That looks terrible. What are you doing? Yeah, but then, all right, so I just have to work within that space. It's a physical zoom? Oh, wow. Okay, all right, do that. Yeah. There's also focus. And people could see the ink lines. Right, I know, so it's right. auto-focused. You can also pan. I know. I know about all that. I just didn't know if the zoom was a digital zoom or a physical zoom. I did not want a physical, I mean a digital zoom. All right, let's see if anybody's actually watching this. Malarkey. Turn up contrast to see. Um, you don't have to turn up the contrast because I'm going to be inking. Well, maybe turn it up just a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. All right. Saturation. Oh my gosh, I still have the old title. Jeez. All right, now I got to go in. Dang it, I thought the restream. Oh, hey, look. look, when you turn up the sharpness. Look. See. Ah. Ain't our last thing. Hey, everybody. Uh, do hit that. Let me see. You do like you like this better than the scrolling comments. Well, sorry. Okay, stop goofing around. I need to get to work. I don't get much time today. I ain't got much time today. I gotta get my. I gotta get as much of this done as I can, and then we have Order of the Green Hand tonight, so. That's fine. That's fine. I just have to remind myself to try to keep just this in the little right cow. Yeah. Alright. I don't need this over here. Ah, yes, I know that I'm streaming Dark Admiral March here. Thank you. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I just started doing it, and then my son came over here and decided to start messing with all the tech. So, ah, oh, you can see. Wow, look how weird my skin looks with that contrast up that high. I look like an old man. That's weird. I've got old man skin now. <laughs> so creepy. Not that old men are creepy, that's not my intention, but whatever. Alright. Hopefully this is a good quill. I'm not sure. It's been a few days since I actually inked, so I'm not sure where my good quill oh this is probably my good quill. Oh, you know what? This is probably my thicker quill. So I could probably do some meteor lines with this one <laughs> all right here we go double page cover although I mean it's technically it's two covers for Lone Star Jawbreakers and Graveyard Shift starring in Monster Hunt I think I'm gonna keep the name you guys like Monster Hunt I think I like it I think I'm gonna stick with it so use this quill because it's a little older to get me some beefier lines uh, what was the loyalty tweet about earlier 
Oh, I had a private conversation with a friend, and it just made me think. Um, it made me think that, and then I was like, you know what, I'm going to tweet this out. I'm not going to say what it's about, and I'm going to see what people's guilty consciences tell them to respond. <laughs> it was a bit of a troll, but uh, it was fun to watch the responses. <clears throat> I can see the full screen, but guess it has can be useful in situations. Is that over? I don't know. So zoomed in, every little shake of the camera is making it's going to give people epilepsy or something. Just attach it to something else. There's nothing else to attach it to. Too bad there's no like image stabilization. All right, we're going to zoom out. Because I, I just feel like you guys are probably going to get a little sick of this shaking. You can use this board. What do you mean I could use this board? The, the board, it's just going to rest against what? Here. No, I'm not. <sighs> Dude, I just want to work. I don't have time to mess with all this stuff. I only have like an hour and a half to work. I don't have time for experimentation right now. I've been wanting to ink this thing since before we left. It's like, I hate leaving pieces undone. And like, I worked on this thing, uh, and then like, oh, we are going to uh, Orange County for the night. And then it's Sunday, and I can't work then. So I've been like chomping at the bit to get back to this thing. Not that I'm obsessive or anything, it's just... I hate leaving work that I want to work on undone. It's weird. Now this is kind of weird, inking from all these different things. Uh, how do you deal with language barriers? I'm afraid he might be mad. We debated over commas. Who are you talking about, Brian? Mike is always trolling. Uh, you know. I take my I take my opportunities. <laughs> a bit evil. No, 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 no. I was just curious. Uh, it was funny though how many people thought it was about Doug. And I'll just I'll just be blunt. It was not about Doug, but I thought it was hilarious how many people thought it was about Doug. <laughs> ah, poor Doug. No. Loyalty. I mean, I'm not going to speak to any specific um, persons. Um, but, you know, that's like one thing about, about George Martin. Like, we had this deal with, uh, with the DeBell brothers. I mean, that's how we met, right? <coughs> and uh, no matter how many times the DeBells screwed up, uh, George would not abandon them, right? Because he's fiercely loyal. The how you know he's how Stark man. He's like he's like uh, I'm gonna dance with the one who brung me, and it was the DeBells that brought them, or, or brought him uh, into doing comics with uh, with me and the Hedge Knight and everything. And he was just fiercely loyal to them. It's like, you know, you, you, you sign up with a guy to do, to do a book. Uh, that should be, that should be your first loyalty. And, uh, yeah, I learned that. <clears throat> I was, I was, I was actually kind of, uh, surprised. Because, I mean, at this point, there had come points in time George was dealing with, like, flipping HBO and, and, and uh, you know, major, major licensors. And yet still, 
still he was loyal to the DeBells because and, and he would that would be like his saying I'm gonna dance with the one that brought me what I think he said brung me but you know that's weird um, and I gotta respect that I gotta respect that <clears throat> and he didn't break that loyalty until uh, such time as the DeBells actively sold off the contract um, to Dynamite for Game of Thrones. And that was their decision, not George's. George would have stuck with them until winter came. Because he had stuck with them through some really, you know, severe screw-ups. Um, so yeah loyalty loyalty backs are not for stabbing and I was just interested in seeing what uh, what little uh, gremlins in the minds of the people would think when I just said something as as non-specific as what I said? <laughs> Cross examinations, the sequel. <clears throat> if you drink too much coffee, will that mess up your inks? I I suppose if you drink too much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful pen, thank you. Wait, does this mean Comicsgate is losing Kelsey because of Doug? Are you trying to read stuff into what I'm saying? <laughs> uh. Please don't try to read anything into what I'm saying because I'm not going to divulge private conversations. Uh, I will only speak in general terms. Because general terms apply to everyone. They are spoken out of principle, not out of particular situations. I wonder if I should render out this hand. Ah, oh, this quill is being so beautiful. Dropping razor sharp lines. Every everything I try to do, do it doesn't. It's not fighting me at all. Ah, I need to order more of these from Japan. Ah. Mm -mm -mm. Can't wait for the Comics Gate crossover. Hey, I can't wait to hit a hundred thousand so I can actually start selling this thing. Cause we gotta do that first. Got to do that first. Hopefully, uh, Ethan will get that cover done quickly. I've got people chomping at the bit waiting for that thing get emails every single day. When is that cover going to be done? I'd like to order it. I thought it was supposed to be out already. Like, huh. Well. You know. You know. You're going to have to wait a little bit longer, okay? It's not that big a deal. Unless the campaign closes first. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 -mm. What's Comicsgate? Should I Google this? Cassidy Morgan, if you want to Google it, just go to whatiscomicsgate.com. That should give you an adequate answer. It's actually an article that I wrote. tips for using quills to ink Mike um, 
I mean, a quill is basically, uh, have you ever been taught how to use a calligraphy pen? It's basically the same principle, whereas, you know, a quill should only go down, diagonal left, diagonal right. And then if you want super thin lines on a calligraphy pen, you can go sideways. It is the same thing with a quill, but you have to have a super light touch because uh, a lot of quills are not, um, I don't know, some of them have burrs and stuff, so if you go if you go sideways like I'm going I'm going down left diagonal left here even though it looks at, like I'm kinda going sideways but um, a lot of times quills will snag your paper and then you'll get splotches and splashes that you did not intend so you you must be mindful you must be ever mindful of the force of the quill you coming to Japan? asks Rusty. Uh, I don't know. I have not been invited. And uh, if I do, it's, it's, I mean, I'll go to the con and everything, but the point of going to Japan would be to visit family. Which, uh, maybe. It is a little pricey. But that's why I do the con, because the con will pay for the trip. But, uh, I don't know. Ed McGinnis wants me to go with him to Japan this year. But uh, uh, if I go to Japan, that means I have to bring family to visit family. So, I don't know. It's kind of a weird situation. Kind of a weird situation. Mm -mm -mm. Any other questions from the peanut gallery? Should I put the uh, the the uh, Bitcoin tracker up? <laughs> I don't even know how it's doing today. Money is just a tool. Greed is the root of all evils. Um, yeah, it doesn't say money. It's the love of money is the root of all evil. So I guess you can also qualify that as greed. Although there is greed for things other than money. But just general covetousness. Not being happy um, with the blessings that you have. But just, you know, becoming greedy and envious you know believing believing in the politics of envy as uh, some do we generally call those people socialists um, yeah that can be very 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 detrimental to your life and the life of those around you This cover is going to be so freaking cool when I'm done with it. BitConnect! <laughs> did you know they, they did a, a... When BitConnect got shut down, they uh, they did another... I think they they tried to do the same thing like on the Ethereum blockchain. With like ETHConnect or something. EtherConnect or ETHConnect, something like that. Can you tell me about XRP and why I should buy it? Okay, XRP is another crypto... Not a financial advisor. Uh, yeah, I am not a financial advisor. Please do not take my suggestions in investment or anything like that. But I can still tell you about XRP. Uh, XRP or uh, Miss... Uh, Miss... Uh, by the company Ripple. It's not actually called Ripple. Some people call it Ripple, but uh, but it's not Ripple. Um, XRP is the cryptocurrency of the company Ripple. It was designed in order to make um, make bank to bank transfers uh, across countries, across borders, 
sort of like Swift. It, uh, basically, it's, it's designed to replace the Swift system. And um, so they, they created a cryptocurrency called XRP. And the point of it is uh, you, you, like the way they currently have it now, each bank in the world has a certain amount of USD um, in their their um, ledger, or however you want to say it. Where's my other quill? Bad did not there it is. Um, and so I think there's something along the lines of four trillion dollars in USD just sitting idly in banks around the world. Um, because when a bank needs to transfer money to another bank in another part of the world, they have to have a certain amount of, you know, they have to have that money there and available. And so even though it's not like, you know, they don't have, there's not $4 trillion worth of $100 bills sitting in banks around the world. It's just all ones and zeros. It's all digital. Um, and so XRP... I wonder if I can turn this and still, you can still see it. All right, um, is designed to take the place of of those USD, US dollars, uh, in order to transfer funds from one bank to another. You can do so, like a, a, a okay. So say I'm I'm sending money to Germany, right? I'd have to do it through a wire transfer. Or a swift transfer, I think. Um, or Western Union, right? And it would take, I mean, depending on, about, on the amount of money, but it could literally take hours or days to get there uh, through this clunky old system that the banks use. Well, if rather than using uh, US dollars, to transfer this this funds, um, you used XRP, a cryptocurrency. That money can be transferred. Oh, and and not only would it be you know take all this time to send the money. If you guys have ever done this, and I have, as I work, you know, I work with global artists uh, from around the world, which is what global means. So I'm kind of being redundant. But anyways, um, it also costs a ton of money. I sent, I sent few hundred bucks I can't remember sixteen hundred dollars or something to Greece once um, and it cost me I think sixty five dollars I'm trying to remember it was, it's been a while but it you know it was a large chunk of change to send you know a like call it a paycheck right it's like sixty five bucks or something like that to send it I think it might have been more it might have been more. I just remember it was freaking crazy expensive. Um, and you probably have done this too. You know, sending a wire transfer in the States doesn't cost much. But doing it country to country, uh, it's quite expensive. Well, you could send XRP from bank to bank, and it's almost free. Almost free. And it takes seconds. Not days, not hours, not minutes. It takes seconds. Um, you know, in the long scheme of things, you know, minutes don't really matter. But um, I'm just I'm just saying how much more. Um, what's the word? Where things just work easier and not not convenient, but. <sighs> less troublesome I don't remember the word I'm trying to think of um, how is your camera rigged I am captain oh man uh, it's on a gooseneck it's a thing called a gooseneck you'd have to uh, actually I have one another one here I can show you So like this is like a gooseneck for an iPad, so it's got a long bendable rod and then it clamps to your table. You can get on Amazon for like 16 bucks. 
so that's uh, that's what XRP was designed for, and because it's designed as such, um, if and when the banks finally do adopt XRP, then the you know right now it's got I don't know what the market cap on XRP is now, but if they ever do adopt it as as the financial coin for transferring wealth around the world, that is a four trillion dollar market cap on XRP, which would ultimately make XRP worth about ten thousand dollars each. So say it corners ten percent of of that that of its purpose right that's a thousand dollar xrp say it corners one percent of <laughs> its purpose right that is a hundred dollar xrp xrp is currently selling at about 40 cents say it does one tenth of one percent of its purpose that is a ten dollar xrp which again right now it's trading at 40 cents so if it if xrp has any success at all in what it was designed to do then holding a few thousand xrp which is only going to cost you you know a couple hundred bucks i guess right now um that's probably a, well i'm not going to say it's a wise investment you never know it's your choice. I'm just telling you what XRP is about. Uh, where's my pencil? Where's my pencil? Where did you go, pencil? Where did my pencil go? Where did my pencil go? Uh, uh, um. First time I live in California. What's up, dude? Yeah, well, do subscribe, man. If you're not already, hit that bell for notifications. I do live streams quite often. I don't do a lot of produced videos. I probably should, but I'm already so busy. And I don't want to make YouTube my job. I use my pencil. Got it. Ah. Got it. I'm trying to decide if I want to change this hand so it's not hidden behind that hand. Yeah, I think I will. All right, where's my eraser? <laughs> where's my pencil? Where's my eraser? All right, let's do that. All right, any other questions? Let's see. I have 6,532 XRP, says Manga Man. Um, love Jesus, love comics, love XRP. Got it. <laughs> no, I'm not saying love it. I'm just saying... It, it's a well-designed cryptocurrency that's got a specific purpose. And the thing is, a lot of people don't like XRP because it's not... Like, the whole vision of Bitcoin is is decentralization, right? It's getting getting the money away or getting it, having a... Um, have a currency... Having a currency that is not beholden to banks. But XRP is like... It's a bank coin, uh, there's not it's not decentralized in the sense that um, you know like bit with Bitcoin everybody that has a node um, is part of the blockchain or not 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 part of the blockchain well the blockchain is written on all the nodes and all, all, all the people's individual computers um, or systems but with XRP I believe all the nodes are are in the banks right so it is sort of decentralized as in there's not one singular or or you know ledger that can be manipulated but all it it's all all of the ledgers all of the the nodes are in the banks themselves so i guess if the banks wanted to get together and and try to fudge with the numbers i don't know they'd be ripping each other off at that point so i don't see how wise that would be um 
Do, do, do. Have you ever tried inking on Photoshop or Manga Studio? Um, I don't really like working on tablets. That's kind of my whole thing. I like the feel of paper. Don't like the feel of working on a piece of plastic. Fifty-two watching. Please do hit that like button. Hit that share button. Let's get some more people in here. So, what did we decide? Is it a sin to be rich? No, it is not a sin to be rich. <laughs> it is a blessing to be rich. It is a blessing. Um, but you know what? That it it does end up. Oh, did, are you guys still reading that as the title? It didn't update. It did not update. Oh, brother. All right, let me hold on. Let me go update. YouTube Studio Beta. I've got sunshine. Live stream on now. Doom. Doom, doom, doom. When does go? Oops, I guess that was the wrong one. Uh, live event, live events. When it's cold outside, I'm inking and streaming. What's up? Um, probably for another hour, and then I gotta do uh, Night's Watch tonight. Are you going to get dinner or something? Well, if it's at like 6.30, if you can schedule it for 6.30, then I'll have a half an hour. Hey, um, I have somebody from school might be interested in taking that big picture in the kitchen. The big what? Oh, uh, no. Uh, see, it changes. Oops. Uh, support my comic. HTTP. Lone Star Comic. .com. Lone Star Live Art Thinking Comics. Save changes. All right, good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Sorry about that, guys. Um. If you buy XRP, you shall bathe in eternal wealth and fortune until it crashes. Well, if XRP actually does get adopted... Oh yeah, Palladium says. <laughs> if XRP gets adopted by banking, like it intends, it won't crash, but it might waver every once in a while. Yeah, there's no such... I mean, every currency on Earth uh, fluctuates, right? Now, the greenback... Uh, has been a fairly stable currency, but you know, it goes up and down too. Just like everything else. Yeah, the American dollar. Yeah. Well, that's inflation. Yeah, the dollar is only worth like 13 cents compared to what it was worth when the Fed took over our banking system. the Fed, which is not actually an American government-based company. It's run by the globalists, yo. Which, tinfoil hat time, is why they killed JFK. Um... Have you thought about making some useful tutorials? You're an amazing artist. On a side note, careful with Bitcoin. My father lost a small fortune when his were stolen. Ooh, that sucks. Did he not have his in a, um, in a, like a ledger? Like ledger Nano or anything? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a scary thing, man. Uh, they have a lot of security measures, but, you know, 
there are still thieves out there. Of course, thieves can steal anything. They can indeed steal just about anything if they want to. Mm -mm -mm. Um, elbow cam. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Thicking out this line a little bit. I really wish I had a good brush so that I could do all my outlines a little bit thicker without uh, having to double up lines. I, I don't like doubling up lines with quill. Not a fan. Not a fan. All right, let's see. Um, title didn't update. Has it updated yet? It should have updated by now. Start inking and chatting. Do, 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 do your channel. Now you're having me check. I could have just asked, huh? Yeah, Lone Star inking and chatting. There we go. Uh, didn't finish, didn't Caesar finish the album already? The album? What's, what's the album? Don't forget to back Shinobi Sasquatch on Indiegogo, says Anthony Erickson. Yeah, and if you're new here, uh, please do check out Lone Star in the corner there, or in the description. Lone Star is my book. This is a, a cover for, actually this is for an add-on book that I will be doing as a part of the Indiegogo once we hit 100,000. So uh, check it out, check it outers. Ugh, this quill is this quill is giving me trouble. I'll probably stop using it in a bit. Jump back to the other one. Uh, chat lag. It's up to date now. I love EVS, but he should have finished that cover. I echo both of your sentiments. Um. But hey, everything happens for a reason. So maybe him not getting it done quite on time will benefit somehow in the future. <laughs> yeah, I might have to actually extend the campaign because of that. Because uh, I think people are going to want more than a week. Or they're going to want their full week. At this point, I can't give them a full week of the EVS cover. Um, unless I extend the campaign. Uh, I can't use this one. I can't use this one. This this has nothing to do with, with uh, Soul of the Soldier. This is a, a separate story that takes place about ten years earlier. So I cannot use this cover. Can you guys hear that, that piano banging in the other room? Mm, so what's going on up in here, Sean? I'm drawing, this is the cover for the uh, $100,000 stretch goal crossover comic with, with Lone Star, The Unknown Soldiers, uh, Graveyard Shift, and jawbreakers lots lots and lots of fun lots and lots of characters even some uh, sort of uh, how would I put it uh, zombie poltergeists Zombie poltergeists. How fun. How fun is that? 
covers have nothing to do with story. Never stop DC or Marvel, so plus one for you. <laughs> Actually, you know what? If Ethan failed to deliver on that cover completely, I have two other covers I could use for that book that I just haven't been able to use. Um, or I also have a sweet Matt Weldon piece I could use for the cover. But he's almost done. He's almost done. He's just got to do a few little vampires to finish it, so... <sighs> Hopefully I'll get done in time for the campaign. Because I, I kind of... Kind of don't want to extend it at this point. I'm not sure that extending it helps all that much. And it just delays me getting the money. Maybe if I extended it by like a week instead of a month. It would certainly close out at a higher amount, that's for sure. Mm, interesting to watch you build a line. I've bought, I've been, I be taught to commit to it. Amazes me to watch. You can unlearn in seconds rules and breaking them, I guess. All right. Uh oh. What the heck is Elijah banging on the right there? Alright. I wanna make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. It's hard to hard to ink and track or the camera. I should just draw some lines on my table. I did that before once. Oh, I wish I had a brush to do his hair. Eh. Mike's a rule breaker. <laughs> May I ask if you own, if in your own and other campaigns you may be familiar with have interest from Japan? Uh, yeah, I got a couple. I didn't, I didn't get a lot of orders from Japan. Don't really know how to uh, target customers in Japan. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, Rusty, did I meet you when I came to uh, Tokyo Comic Con last year? Because that's one way to do it. Is just go to the Comic Con and hand out cards and tell people to follow me on YouTube. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> That's funny, Captain. Brent, I kind of wanted EVS to troll Mike with a cover of characters that were in the first book for only a couple of panels. No, sorry, we have not met. I'm endeavoring to set up a site like Inicron targeting domestic Japanese. Oh, that's cool. That's cool, man. Sugoyo. Uh, how many orders on Lone Star number one went to Australia? I don't know, man. I don't. I don't want, want to look it up right now. I'm kind of. I'm in the middle of drawing. Uh, I do not like how this hair is coming out. I 
may not be Asian, but after the success of One Punch Man and My Hero Academia, maybe your product has a chance. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, who knows? You never know, man. I need to get the mag over there. Anime hair. <laughs> it's not anime hair. It's just kind of a little dirty hair, I guess. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Palladium. If you missed Heart of the Hero, there is a backing option with issue 1 and 2C on LoneStarComic.com currently. Seems like we have several new people here. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let me know how you stumbled upon this channel. going to guilt Rob Liefeld into doing a cover for you. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, that would be cool, man, if I could get a cover from Rob. But uh, I think he promised a cover to Art, who he's much better friends with. And he has not even delivered on that, so... So he's probably too busy for a little old me. Are you in media? What are you doing, boy? Rob is too 90s for Mike. Liefeld ever unblock me on? I have no idea. Uh, why doesn't your channel have more subs? I don't get it. Um, Because I don't do pithy little interesting video, topical videos that are clickbait. I just do a whole lot of live streaming of drawing and talking and whatever hanging out hanging out on the hangouts and so therefore uh, therefore this the YouTube doesn't suggest my channel for the most part so it grows slowly but hey, man, I've got 6,000 subs. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't complaining. It's a pretty decent sub count. I've only been on here for about, uh, when did I start last June? So it'll be, it'll be a year, like in a month. 6,000 subs in a year? Hmm, I'll take it. I'll take it. I would like more, so feel free to hit that share button. Is there a way to still catch Lone Star Volume 1? I'm new to comics. Uh, let a lone indie comic. Being 41 years old, I'm just fubbing around in the dark. If possible, I'd like to grab both. Yeah, Cap Captain, if you go to... <laughs> Sorry, Captain, we have a no swearing rule in this uh, uh, chat, so I'm not going to read your name out loud. Um, but if you go down to the description... Uh, and you go to LoneStarComic.com, just click on that, head down to the part where it says Lone Star 1 and 2C, and that will give you both Lone Star Heart of the Hero and Lone Star Soul of the Soldier, which is the book I'm working on currently. 
and then after that you will have um, once we hit a hundred thousand dollars stretch goal you'll have the opportunity to also pick up this book which is a, a crossover book with three different titles um, which will only be available to people who have already purchased Soul of the Soldier. Um, gets hit by YouTube because it's mainly Lone Star. What? Drama is reserved for other Comicsgate channels. Well, we do we do the occasional the occasional dramatic reading here. <laughs> we can bring Malin and uh, Nasser back for a, a bit of fisticuffs. A little uh, Real Housewives of Comicsgate. <laughs> They're our own, our very own Kardashians, those two. Where's Doug the Kardashian? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There's enough, there's enough drama on all the other channels, though, that I can just hang out here and doodle. Uh, have you ever thought of translating to other languages like Spanish? Many countries like mine, Colombia, are experienced, experience, experiencing a new dawn on the comic scene. Um, you mean like for the Indiegogo or just you mean in general? Yeah, at, at, at some point um, when I publish, what I will do is license out books to those countries. Let me double check. Jawbreakers. What? Uh, sorry. So his hair is brown. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of make it dirty. I'm just going to kind of make his hair a little bit dirty. It was okay, right? Doug is the dirty homeless guy. If you use demons in your stories, is that considered blasphemous? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, just be mindful how you treat the subject matter, I guess. You know, you know. I mean, if, are you are you portraying them as as the good guys? That might be blasphemous. What are you doing, Elijah? Hmm? What are you doing? Eating broth. No, I mean with the computer. Hmm? With the computer. I like these drawing streams. They are a supplemental to my effort to learn to draw. I got the Bridgman book you recommended. Oh, right on, Gimp. Right on, dude. Yeah, right now I'm just inking, so not not a lot of drawing learning going on here. But uh, if you want to learn how to ink, oh, Anna wanted to learn how to ink. Maybe she should be watching. Maybe she should be in here. Asking me questions about inking. Was that cryptic tweet aimed at Nasser? I'm not going to reveal who I was speaking to, Dynamo or who I was speaking about, or anything of the sort. Art T. Bear is a pretty good anchor. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, art, art's, a, art's a legend, a legend in his own mind. Art's great, art's great. Tried to get him to 
uh, as an inker on Injustice once, but uh, eh, didn't happen. Didn't happen. They said they couldn't afford him. Which probably meant they couldn't afford him and me together on a book. But, eh, eh, whatever. Um, pay attention to how Mike pulls and throws his strokes. I'm not having a stroke. <laughs> not a stroke. Strauk. I, I am having a strauk. So I am going to be drawing or inking the jowl breakers a little, I think a little bit more like how Kelsey drew them than how Malin drew them, only because uh, I feel like there's a little bit more of a feeling of, of military decor in how Kelsey did them. And that's kind of... I was very interested in how, in the similarities between Jawbreakers and My Unknown Soldiers. I mean, I even kind of play up the gag in the story. Um, because I have a character named Pastor. And Richard has a character named Priest. And oddly enough, both of their vi their, their powers are vision-based. And uh, neither of us knew that about each other's characters developing them um, but when I finally got this book and I was <laughs> I was like oh man but uh that's all right just one of those little interesting cases of parallel development and I do I do get to sort of play with that in the story <laughs> Game of Thrones stream, Rhaegar, that's tonight. That's on uh, Order of the Green Hand. We're going to be doing The Night's Watch. Might be the last episode. I'm not sure. Well, I'll talk to him about it, and uh, if we want to continue doing it after tonight, um, then yeah. It'll be, it'll be based more on the books, though, I think. Of course, John Wick 4 is confirmed. John Wick, now there's something we could talk about. How many of you guys saw John Wick so far? I mean, John Wick 4, uh, 3. John Wick! Why private? We would understand. What are you talking about? Um. The hand in the bottom left deserves a Grammy or at least an Emmy for inking. Bottom left. This hand? This one? What are they fighting? Um, they're actually fighting my characters. This is a classic superhero uh, screw up where the heroes end up fighting each other. Just like in the good old days. Oh man, I was at a, a comic shop the other day and they had a copy of uh, X-Men Teen Titans and I was like, oh, it's 30 bucks though. If money didn't mean anything to me, I would have picked that up. 
X Men, Teen Titans, Walt Simonson. Ugh. Man. That's what this is going to be like X Men and Teen Titans. So here's this is the Jawbreakers on this side. See? And on this side, you have Lone Star and the Unknown Soldiers. And then in the background, you've got Graveyard Shift. Um, this is a character uh, in the story called Seance, and she can raise these these zombie poltergeists and then control them. So that's what these hands are creeping up in here too. Uh, and this is this is actually uh, Killjoy. So Killjoy, you guys might have noticed from the first book, is a shapeshifter. Uh, but nobody, I, this is the first time I'm having him shapeshift into like a huge muscle bound dude because it's like why wouldn't he be able to <laughs> so he'll be the one that's fighting cuffs in the story uh, spoilers Reminds me of the opening for the X-Men animated series from the 90s. Well, it is based it is based on on the X-Men um, 101, I think. With this would have been uh, Jean Grey as the Black Queen, and then you know you had the X-Men coming in on this side, and then the Hellfire Club coming in on this side. But I just kind of added a whole bunch of stuff to it. I didn't do like the the same p poses or anything. She's kind of in the same pose, more or less. Um, but then everything else is pretty different, but it's the same concept. So it's not not completely completely an homage, but uh, it is sourced at the very least. Of course, the one I'm thinking of is is the Hellfire Club one, which might have been John Byrne homaging Dave Cockrum. So this is a, a concept that has been done numerous times. But I turned it into a double page spread because this is actually going to be two covers. Um, two different covers. So you'd have to get both covers. Which means you can display them, the books, next to each other as well. If you want to frame them, you can frame them up together as one image. That'd be cool. Cool with me, anyways. Alright, I actually don't like what I just did. But I'm not going to tell you what I don't like about it. <laughs> important do you rank anatomy studies I took anatomy one and two but drawing really helped me grasp forms uh, I think it's desperately important that you know your anatomy but it's more important that you know your structure and they are not the same thing the anatomy is is you know the muscle groups and all that stuff um, skeletal structure but the structure is how those muscle groups create shapes and form and build off of and work against one another. So one cannot know perfect anatomy, and but if they know their structure well enough, they can get away with doing some amazing stuff. And one, one can know perfect anatomy and not understand how the structure works. And so you'll have your muscles going to the right places on the right parts of the skeleton, but it'll still all look unnatural. Uh, you refuse to see the X-Men movie? It looks boring? I don't know. I think it looks good. And I may be in the minority, but I think Dark Phoenix... You know, they're, they're, they're drawing it from the... Uh, from the comics, at least 
in part and depending on how much they draw from it dude that was one of the coolest storylines ever you know and I'm hoping it ends the way it did in the comics but I don't know if they're gonna do that I found what I needed to. I'll be contributing tomorrow. Thank you, Captain. Thanks, Captain. I can't see it. I can't read it. So, I have a question for the audience, including those who saw Game of Thrones last night. Uh, what would you consider the worst series ending episode of all time? Hmm. Is that Glowworm? Glowworm? What's Glowworm? Is that from X-Men? What do you do if you smear the ink? <laughs> God forbid. Don't even say things like that. Like slide your hand along wet ink. I'm a lefty so I smear pencil regularly. Oh. Oh. Well, I try to avoid that. <laughs> I do try to avoid that, so. But it has happened. Um, you know, you deal with it. You deal with it. You either find a way to work it into the piece, or you find a way to white it out of the piece. Not really any other options, unless you just want to wait until you're done scanning it in and Photoshop it out. I mean, there was there were many many years um, when you would be incredibly, incredibly hard pressed to find any whiteout on any of my pages, um, and it's not that I never made a mistake, but I would always, if I did make an error, which you know wasn't often, but if I did. I would try to find a way to work it into the piece because I was just like anti whiteout. <laughs> but now my the piece is more important than my pride, so if I screw up, I fix it. Worst, end worst ending. Uh, let's see. Seinfeld? My name is Earl Seinfeld. Dexter? You didn't like Dexter? Alright, I'm not going to say what happens in case anybody hasn't watched it. Um...
Claremont rocked, indeed. I have not watched True Blood. My name is Earl. I did not watch that either. Although my brother knew that guy. Um, what's that guy's name that played Earl? Because he was a skater, and my, my, you know, we grew up. My brother's way more into skating than I was. Um, Jason Lee. Jason Lee. Yeah. He knew that dude before he was an actor. When he was just a skater. Um Lost. Thank you, Perth Comics. That is my that is my vote. It's lost. Seinfeld had a good ending. Seinfeld's pretty bad. Greetings, CDO families. Hello. No school on Memorial Day. Thanks for the heads up. Jeez. Sopranos, no closure, like pick a narrative and go, I know, I know. Uh, Lost was terrible. SGM just uses his smudges. Uh, yeah, I can't do that. I'm too anal retentive. <laughs> you changed your vote to Lost. Uh, my last marriage. Aha, for TV. Last series of Doctor Who. Oh. You don't mean the Christmas episode. The Christmas episode was great. That was like the best episode of the entire season. Which was a horrifically, horrendously lackluster season. What are you complaining about now? Oh, nothing. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Good, man. No, I was just asking you what was the uh, the worst ending to a TV series people could recall. I'm going to give it to Lost. Lost was such a horrible ending. Yeah, we didn't even... I didn't even make it through that. That's kind of about the time that I bailed on television. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I've never seen the ending to Lost. Hey, let me, uh... Oops. I'm trying to drag you over here to the corner. I'm trying to put you in the corner, man. There you are. All right. It's like you're drawing some uh, Joan Breakers there. That is correct. This is the cover. The, uh... Two covers to the, uh... Uh, uh crossover. Le Grand Crossover. <laughs> it's gonna be fun, man. It's gonna be so have, much fun. Have you already scripted it out? I have indeed. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna send it to you, huh? Yeah. Sorry. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a real quick read. If you want to just read it while we're here, I could. Uh, let me send it to you and see what you think. All right. Let me open up the Gmails. Because I'm a G. Alright. So I'm use G now. Edwin Bouillet. And it's called Monster Hunt. And I think I'm just going to keep the title. I thought it was a little hokey, but I'm like, you know what? We could use a little hokey. <laughs> as long as it's fun, man. PDF so okay? How many... Say again now? PDF okay? Yeah, PDF is fine. And this has been approved by everyone. You know, I, I'm probably I'm probably going to have an unpopular opinion here, 
I enjoyed the last episode of Game of Thrones. Get out. Get out <laughs> now. <sighs> Why do you have to tell me that, dude? Tofler says, please read Doom to us, Edwin. I don't know if it would match the stream. <laughs> Doom. Doom. Oh, good. You're here. I'll let you... Uh... Well, if you're going to read that, then... I was going to say, you can take over reading the chat. <laughs> I can probably do both. I can probably do both. I'll pop out the chant. Yeah, I, I, I get that there's some stuff that's that's unsatisfying, but it kinda it kinda put a bow on it. It opened up a it opened up a world of possibility for um for Arya Stark. Right? Uh you mean uh uh Dora the Explorer? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, one thing I worry about one thing I worry well, I don't I don't worry about it. It's more an observation. It seems like it seems like societally, we may be conditioning ourselves to find the things that we hate. <laughs> well, I, the thing is, I love Game of Thrones. Hello. The thing is, Edwin, everything sucks. Hello. Everything is bad, bad, horror bad. Hi. Captain Hilt says, Edwin, what is your background in comic books, or are you just a big fan and friend? Uh, I kind of I kind of got back into comic books. I had like a 10-year break. I had a 10-year break, and about this same time, you had Richard C. Meyer. Uh, at the time, he was going by the uh, nickname Diversity in Comics. What does he have now? Comics Matter with your boy Zach and That's, Luna or something? Yeah. It's the worst. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a or, horrible name. Or have you just conditioned yourself to hate it? Yes. Yes, exactly. You see how that works? Yeah. Anyway. Um, so I started getting back into comic books, started going down to my LCS and reading this mess. And I was like, whoa, this, um, this truly sucks. <laughs> yeah. This 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 is not the this is not the the comic book stories I read you know in my twenties, in early thirties, you know I was kind of tapering down in my thirties, and I I have I have pretty modest expectations from comic books. I generally don't expect them to be great works of literature. I expect them to be generally capable superhero or adventure action stories with a nice visual presentation. And what I came back to was agenda-laden nonsense and uh, a degenerated art style, for the most part. And so there was there was no there was no patterns. You know, the patterns I was used to, the cues I was used to, the consistency, the coherency, none of that was there. And then so I started digging in, and and the more I dug in, the more disappointing it was. And so about a year and a half ago. I like to make these little goofy little Twitter videos. So I was one of the big proponents of Comicsgate. I was I was pushing Comicsgate before the very first independent comic book, even before Jawbreakers was launched. <laughs> Back when Ethan was still drawing Green Lantern, man. And so it kind of had a it had a different focus, and you know, kind of centered centered around Zach. Though at the time, and even still now. Zach does not call himself Comicscape. I mean, he obviously embodies those things. Yeah. But as, as a branding thing or as as an hashtag, he's never called himself Comicscape. No. Yeah, my, my point to him was one time was like, you know, it doesn't matter what you call yourself. You'll always be Comicscape as long as you're making comics or talking about this stuff. Right. Yeah. All right. So now, about that time, a little bit after that, Zach announced that he was going to do Jawbreakers. And so when they, when they got that team together, I, I made like a goofy little 18-style promo for that. And I, I just kind of kept going. You know, I, I didn't wait around. I just like, hey, this is cool. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's get people excited. Because you can spend forever in a day. I mean, you can spend the next two decades 
talking about how much Marvel and DC has disappointed you. And we did that with an incredibly loud voice for over a year. And the fruits of that were nothing. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was absolutely zero change in the time that we've been talking about that. I think Captain Marvel has been rebooted four times. Iceman's been canceled and restarted. Champions has been canceled and restarted. Just doubling down on the nonsense, increased threats. Uh, I've had, I've had industry professionals working at Marvel in DC, trying to paint me as a Ku Klux Klan member. I'm from a diverse family. I, <laughs> I love, I love people who love good things. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've never, I've never been a a far right person. Never been. It's just not in our language. I was, I was real fortunate. I grew up in the South, man. But my dad, my dad was in the army at a young age, and I never heard racial slurs in my home. Not once from my parents. Never, not a single time. It just, it wasn't a part of our family language. Yeah. And I grew up in a small town in the rural south, and you were like, well, that's got to be redneck territory. Well, yeah, kind of, but kind of not. I mean, stuff was there, but it was so small that everybody, everybody got along. Everybody got along. So, so it was just so bizarre. It was so bizarre to hear these wackadoodle, these wackadoodle, far left i mean just cookie cutter mayonnaise white folks calling me calling me the ku klux klan calling me the alt-right calling me a white supremacist and no repudiation that's just what they none. do none and there's been there's been no diversity there's been no diversity of perspective of thought there's been no signal that there's any diversity of of story or plotting or characters it, it's it's all a push it's all a push it's all a push to to push this essentially this progressive agenda and i, I don't i don't want to get too political so all, all the stuff we did in comics gate as far as interacting with the uh interacting with the comic book companies bore absolutely zero fruit there was there was zero dialogue other other than to double down and call everybody a hate group uh -huh. they they mobilized their media connections in the washington post in some of these different small regional papers and websites to try and paint comics gate as a hate group and as an alt-right movement And so when I saw these books starting, when I saw these books starting to come out, hey, there's uh, got a couple of questions for you. Let me hit these. All right. Let's we'll see. A new disguise. Edwin Boyack calling a white person a Nazi is the same as calling the African American a racial slur. It's close. It's close. It's meant to degrade somebody and expose them to harm. Albino Thunderbuns. I just got here. Is there any update on EVS's Lone Star 2 cover? Ask EVS. That's a no. <laughs> Yowza Comics says, Edwin, where do people send pics for a fan version of Draw and Quarter? So I guess I guess you're talking about you're not talking about draw along with Drawn and Quarter. You're talking about the fan edition that's run by Pixel Trader and Chester Bosby. Uh, probably I would tag Chester Busby in it. So if you're wanting to have, are they doing a draw, draw along with fan edition? They may be. Uh, I imagine they would. Excuse me. Probably Twitter. Probably Twitter. I don't, I don't know if they, if they look at them live. Usually I, I'll dip in and out a couple times during their program. I don't know if they're doing like the full deal like we we do with Drawn and Quartered, Draw Along with Drawn and Quartered where we show everybody's art. Man, we get so many entries now, Mike. I know, and so many of them are good, man. I mean like publication-ready stuff. I know. 
<laughs> you know, probably uh, some of that stuff, some of that stuff just needs like an hour of cleanup, a color, and it's it's ready to go in a book, dude. Dude, that, that, the, did you say, the entries for Kyung's, for Knuckle Bomb? Oh, yeah, yeah, Man, yeah. Man, there's like, there's like, I'd probably say there's 10 or a dozen that I would straight up just publish, you know? Yeah, I haven't picked my, I haven't winnowed down the semifinalist. I need to do that. That stuff is so good. Anyway, anyway, so so somebody was asking me about my uh, involvement in Comics Geek. Mm-hmm. So what I did is I made a promotional video for Jawbreakers. And then I did another one. And then I started doing showcases and more promotions and more promotions. And then I would sit down and talk to people and get to know people. So what I would try and do is I would try and connect people together. Right, because a lot of people, you know, want to do things, but they don't necessarily have connections. Uh, and so, once I understood that somebody was serious, because everybody and their brother wants to start a comic book, wants to, but yeah. they haven't actually sat down and done the the work for it. They're not right. serious about it. But when you when you identify somebody that's really put in that work, and they're trying to find resources, I would try and put people together and network and stuff. And then I kept promoting and. Yeah, and I haven't slowed down. <laughs> Not even in your old age. <laughs> Not e- yes, yes. Not even in my gray years. Good. But it's great, though, because even more people are doing it now. I mean, more people make videos, they share stuff, they do showcases of their own. And that is, that is fantastic because it gives, once you get this robust network of people, I mean, Comicsgate has grown to be so much more than it was when, when, when did you when did you announce have you have you been in for a year now was it may about it was, this time i think it was june pretty sure it was june cuz you were streaming for a couple of weeks before you before you launched yeah uh i could check i could just go back through my videos yeah. And uh, hey, this is this is not to take away anything from people who like who like breaking down the stuff from Marvel and DC. But I, I try not to do things that people can do better. And so there, there there's voices that are really good at being entertaining about ranting some of this stuff. Uh-huh. So I try and focus on what I'm good at, you know, what, what, what I can do that adds some value and in, in stuff that I enjoy. Let's see. Captain F word that I can't say. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> That's new. a naughty name, Captain F. Captain Foxtrot. Caught my first draw stream with huh. that Star Wars girl. Just great. I can't watch live as I'm in Scotland, but I will be watching. Oh, very good. Scotland, you say. That sounds lovely. Let's see. Lou says Edwin. Uh, let's see. Playlist. Mike Miller. Hey, mates. How's your day been? How's your day been, Mike? Um, not bad, not bad. Can't complain. Can't complain, can't complain. When did we start Friday Night Auctions? That that was not that long ago. It's Let's been see. going. Has um, it been going for three months now? Four. I forget something like that. Um, view full playlist. I'm trying to go by playlist here, but it's kind of hard. And I can only scroll back three months. Oh, yeah, What yeah. was the very first drawn and quartered? Wow. Uh, I'm going to have to look that up. I'll open up another YouTube tab. YouTube. And look for some... It wasn't for Rogue. Some drone and Rogue boomer. was around three. Let's see when Rogue was. Rogue was... All right, playlist. September. Oh, okay. We got... didn't start drawing and quartered for a while after. <sighs> I don't know. Right, the first one you have listed. Well, they're kind of. They don't really sort. I think the first ones were just called drawn and quartered, and yeah. didn't have a. Uh, say round three was rogue. Round four was starfire. Ah. Uh, I'm looking for which one is issue number one or episode number one. 
We've gotten more sophisticated. With oh, them. Captain America, I think. It was what now? Captain America. Was it? Was Ke No. Was number one Captain America? Wasn't it? Let me see. Sierra Whiskey would know. He bought it. Mm -hmm. dun, dun, dun. Boomer time. Boomer time. And the living is easy. Let's see. I'm playing. If I just get past this. I get inundated with Game of Thrones. Oh, Nasser was on here. Uh, what are you guys drawing? Looks like Captain America. Yeah, it's Captain America. Looks yeah, like uh, first one. September 11th. Was that the first one with Gary Shippen? Yeah, he won. Yep. G ship. Oh, gee, ship. A new disguise says, I remember when Edwin didn't have gray hair. I blame it on, I blame it on Mike. <laughs> blame it all on Mike. I'll accept that. Does Edwin watch Game of Thrones? I do. I do. I do. And I, it, the, the ones that, that, that Mike and the Order of the Hands and like Malin just hate, those are my favorite ones. <laughs> The more pain that they call Mike and Malin, the more joy I derive from them. Because I'm just, I'm just sitting here, and I'm, I'm like contemplating. I bet right now, right now, Miller is having a little mini stroke. <laughs> there's a, there's a little string of drool coming out of yeah. Miller's mouth right now. Love this scene so much. <laughs> uh, disappointing. <laughs> Disappointing, Malin. I mean, Edwin. Slick Rick says Edwin and Edwin and Mike need to donate some hair to EVS. Nah. Well, nah. I'll go trim up some nose hair and put it in a Ziploc and get that right in the post. <laughs> <laughs> I need my hair. I'm not a handsome man, but I have good hair. Uh, no, but I, oh, oh, I told you I would look at your script. That's why you sent it. Let that me go is to why them. I sent it. Yeah, it's not like Nasser, like, yeah, Nasser, send me a script. Uh, I'll look at that about a half past never. <laughs> <laughs> be nice to Nasser. It's my job to beat up on him. Oh, <laughs> okay. Let's see. Did you send it to Gmail? Uh, yeah, I believe. Huh. Let me check. Maybe. Maybe you're caught in a spam folder. I don't see it. Possible, I uh, guess. Let's see. Let's look at spam. Spam, 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 spam. Uh, I don't see it. Did you, I wonder if you actually accidentally sent it to my Yahoo? Let me see. Doom, doom, doom. Did I type in Ed. Oh, yeah, it goes to Yahoo first. Yeah, got it. Yahoo! Monster hunt. It was a mash. It was a monster mash. <laughs> it was a graveyard smash. They did the mash. Go away. Right. Can I read any of this out loud, or is it all uh, yeah, embargoed? Sure, no. You can't read all of it, but, you know, you can read the beginning. And read the beginning. Okay. Page one. Opening image. Panel one. The moon rises over the ridge of an outlook. A young couple sit in a car unseen from this angle. Caption. A decade past. Panel two, the boy is kissing the girl. All right. Panel three. Oh, my gosh. Who's trying to get in the house? He tries to get to second base. Whoa. The girl. Cecil! She stops him. They pull apart. She hears a noise. Girl. Cecil! Stop! 
<laughs> what? What? I'm just getting started. Girl. Now, why are you doing you Cecil's voice for the girl? Oh, is that Cecil's voice? I don't know. That one's my girl voice. <laughs> All right, girl. The girl says, oh, Cecil. She stops him. They pull apart. She hears a noise. Girl. Cecil, stop. What? I'm just getting started. <laughs> girl. Did you hear something? Panel five. He says... He says she's trying to stall. Oh, oh, putting a lot of pressure on the young lady there. What's a decade ago? She looks outside and asks him to check outside. Cecil. Are you being for real right now? Girl. I'm serious. I heard something outside. Listen. Cecil. Oh, for Pete's sake. Panel six. The boy reluctantly opens the door and steps outside to see. Hello. Page two. <laughs> Splash page. The monster in shadow. So we don't see what he really looks like. The monster says, Rawr! And Cecil says, So that is the first page of the team up monster hunt. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> well, I gotta have my I gotta have my Cecil cameo in there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it's a good choice. It's a good choice. Oh, I thought about doing using Nasser, but then I'm like, well, that's just so unrealistic. That Nasser would be in a car with a girl. I like these. I like these gunfire special effects. Rat a tat tat, bang bang, pa 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 pow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. The clicking of empty guns. Click, click, click. Clickety <laughs> clack, clickety clickety clack. Yeah. Well, this looks good. Yeah, this will work, man. Well, you have to read the whole thing, but that uh, should be well, fun. I'm, I'm scanning through. Okay, there's Lone Star, there's Pastor, there's Killjoy. Stoker. Oh, what? Well, now I can't I can't read some of this because there's some there's some good stuff in there and I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. Thor Jones says, this is unsettling. What? <laughs> oh, Nasser. I, I think my impersonation of Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> Nasser would say, hey, this monster reminds me of something. Looks at camera. Remember to back tricks again, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, true. That's about dead on. It's about that on. Spot on. Spot on. Uh, where is my stencils? Looking good. Wow, you even drew them with four fingers and a thumb. <laughs> Wait, what are you Cut about? no corners here. Oh, you're watching it on uh, YouTube? Yeah. Though I'm looking at the foreshortening on his left hand, and I'm not sure. <laughs> it could just be the angle of the camera, though. It's a tiny hand. A tiny, tiny hand. That's right. How do you... How do you oh, okay, yeah, yeah, it was the camera angle. At that, where it was angled around... Yeah, this whole camera. The, I have the camera at a forty-five degree angle to my desk, so everything yeah, looks yeah. kind of like warped. Yeah, 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 like that. It does look like tiny little. <laughs> How do you? And it, is it just habit now, or when you're when you're building your construction lines, do you kind of figure out your foreshortening? Do you have Do you have some kind of gauge you use for foreshortening, or how do you? Uh, no, it's just it's 
It's second second nature now. Just kind of planned it in. When you were first starting, what do you remember what helped you get it right? When I first started drawing? Before yeah, and really, asked, really drawing child, things. I don't remember. Oh, okay. Well, when you first draw, started drawing poses with dynamic action, where limbs or, you know, a character is moving and, and the limbs and parts of the body might be on different planes, kind of, or different parts of the plane. I would have to probably credit uh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. Really? Yeah. That was my jam. That? How about that? That was my jam. As it was, I think, for most people back then. Uh, second drawn a quarter was on September 18th. Yeah, uh, we're just uh, we're trying to figure out when I started streaming. It was it was pretty much I had started like streaming a little bit. Um, before I was doing like how to videos and stuff because I was talking to Ethan um, you know before the whole four hundred four hundred thousand dollar night you know the night the, <laughs> the night that broke Captain Cummings um, oh yeah 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 that was so bizarre man I have never understood that at all yeah but that was it. That was that was the night before that. Or uh, no, I was streaming before that, but it was mostly like art videos, how to draw, um, and then you know that that night. That's when when uh, Ethan was you know high on life, and he's like, Mike, you gotta be Comics Gate. You gotta be. I'm like, I don't even know what Comics Gate is, but you just made four hundred thousand dollars. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so but then you know understanding what comic it was and then we had that whole kerfuffle with with gosh cummings didn't even come on for the the big powwow did he no i don't think so no. i think his, the last time he came on was a celebration yeah. Because we were, we, we were that night. We celebrated the um, the results of the uh, the Indiegogo for Cyberfrog, right. right? Right. Yeah, and then out that that's what that was what it was. The next day, that's when I was drawing that that uh, you know drawing the big picture with all the all the comic skate characters that I was aware of, and then um, somebody on Twitter. Uh, Yowza is asking what happened with Captain Cummings, so I'm kind of answering this with this this story. I was on Twitter, and again, I was completely new to what people considered Comicsgate. Ethan was just kind of telling me about it that next day on a uh, as I was drawing, and he was talking. Uh, we were talking. It was just like hanging out in an old studio, kind of the way we do things here and there, where we're just both drawing, you know, and just chatting and stuff. Um, and and um, so I had drawn that cover, and then somebody's like, "Hey, you should put Tim Lim's USAGI and uh, Thump Donald, you know, the Thump character on the cover yep. too." And yep. I didn't know if they were Comicsgate or what was Comicsgate, so I said, "Hey, Ethan, can I get a ruling on this?" And Captain Cummings lost his ever loving mind and he decided to do this whole freaking video where he's bashing me he's bashing ethan and and this is like legit like a day or two later after he had just been like super super chum chum pals uh on on ethan's stream and he just lost his freaking mind and just started all this derogatory stuff against us and I'm like, um, what's, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, that was bizarre. That yeah. Was bizarre. Yeah. And so, so then Doug Ernst jumped on the Captain Cummings bandwagon and, uh, but he was, he was at least willing to come on, on Ethan's stream and, and hash it out, which was, you know, I totally respect. Um, yeah. 
But then, you know, they're all going on about, you know, gatekeeping and blah, blah, blah. And Ethan's trying to take over the movement and all this stuff and whatever. And who's this Mike Miller guy? And, and how does he have the bona fides to freaking be Comics Gate? And then I'm just like, I told my, my long story of persecution as an out and open conservative and Christian in the comic book community for the last quarter century. And, uh... At the end, I'm like, so, uh, Doug, how's, how do my bona fides qualify? He's like, oh, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was right at the beginning, man. It was right at the beginning. Yeah, I, I never understood that because you don't have to ask anybody's permission to be comic skate. Well, apparently I did. They, yeah. I just think they, and and that was a weird thing. That's that's something that you echoed, and um, so many people echoed. It's it's that it's not it's not a creator movement. It's a consumer movement. Yes. Right. And you know when 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 Ethan left the movement, or he didn't leave the movement. He just said, "I'm you know it's a consumer movement. So I'm a creator. You're the consumers." I'm here to serve this market. I'm a, I'm a creator whose focus is serving the comic skate market. And I'm like, that's correct. That sounds correct to me. Right? Uh, but then he backtracked on that the next day. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, but you, but you were right. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of how I see myself. I am a I'm a creator that essentially caters to Comicsgate. And right? I, I think he just got, he, I, I think he had a little stretch there where he got so frustrated because I think everybody in, in the world wanted something from him. Mm -hmm. You just, you can't, you can't do everything. It's just, it's just not possible. And, you know, I, I don't know if people even understand it anymore, but you can you can even get a comic book published without Ethan Van Skyver ever once saying your name. What? <laughs> Say it ain't so. I mean, it's great. It's great if he has time to do like a showcase and, and show his audience stuff, but it, it just can't. That can't be like the focus. And I, I think... I think a lot of people were disappointed with that. There you go. Look at this handsome fella. Who's that? <laughs> that looks like the number one brand fan. <laughs> I'm hope. Who is that? That's not supposed to be me. It is. Oh no! Why would you do that to me? It is. I'll give you a T-shirt. That is not flattering at all. No, it's a caricature. It's not supposed to be flattering. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be mildly annoying. I'll give you some muscular shoulders, though. How about that? Could you make me look like Brad Pitt or something? <laughs> Here, I'll put the I'll put the thunder chicken on you. All right, there's knife hand. I'm all I think I'm all done inking him. Here, Let's let me see. get the camera at a normal I've got to go back to I've got to go back the only thing that sucks about this um OBS so here's yeah here's you have to go back to uh YouTube if you want to see straight down angle oh it looks good dude Nothing. whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh no am I I'm not using this mic am I no I shouldn't be well I like that I like that right hand reaching out from the uh, bottom right of the panel. Yeah. That's good. That's one of the uh, zombie poltergeists. <laughs> so now have you got your have you got your groove down with your with your colorist now where they like uh they do some additional rendering for you, like building up shadows and such? Or um, give them depth to stuff? Yeah, generally. Generally speaking. RT Bear says you nailed that uh, drawing of me, apparently. Hang on. I'm giving you some more muscular shoulders. Let me oh, add well, some to it. 
I'll make you look heroic. How about that? Sure. Spot some. Let me get a little shading in with my my no shading technique. <laughs> well, that does make you kind of wide, though. All right. No, you can't have everything. My uh, my scale on your thunder chicken is a little bit off. Here you go. Let's see if this is coming through. I've got a Hangouts video. Let's get that right. There my thunder go. chicken. Yeah. I still don't have one of those shirts. <laughs> well, you're you're ready for prime time, Edwin. There you go. I do have to say you're a hundred times better than Nasser. <laughs> I've been uh, I've been going through a, uh, this book called Fun with a Pencil by yeah. Andrew Gomez. Oh yeah. And I'm I'm slowly starting to learn shading. I mean, I, I still look like 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 Jojo should be giving me art lessons. <laughs> 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 it'll be alright it's just for fun yeah. it's just for fun I just want to be able to doodle just a little bit better so when I get my when I get my little jabs in they can be just a little bit more entertaining <laughs> that's the whole rhyme and purpose huh I see yeah. but everything is everything is index cards and number two pencils I gotta go get me some graphite pencils I think uh, number two pencils are fine. The, uh, uh, number two is basically an HB. Yeah. So it's like a middle of the road, middle of the road uh, softness and hardness and darkness and all that stuff. Well, I'm just thinking for like, because I've been I've been trying to learn some of the shading to like build up depth to things. And I, w I would like some of the darker, you know what I mean? Because you, you try and do it all with the number two. You, you've almost just got to like, Unless you won't start out with everything being real light, it, it's it's hard to get that contrast between your midtones and some of the other stuff without just going crazy. Uh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Is it true the boys in the kitchen at Applebee's call you knife hands? Best blooming <laughs> onions. <in laughs> That's perfect. Wow, the meme that will not die. I must kill it. It is perfect. Yes, yes. Whoever asked that question, you are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. I wonder if Richard's going to mind. I'm putting a uh, pa uh, uh, priest in an actual like jacket. I want him to look class him up a little bit. What are you doing to him? I'm putting him in a jacket. You know, in in the Jawbreakers he just has like a vest with a like a purple shirt. Oh yeah. Oh, but you're you're putting him in like a um a legit coat. <laughs> He's gonna be my Johnny Cash. <laughs> my man in black. That sounds legit. Right. Right, right. Are you still drawing, Edwin? Somebody asked me to do a Charlie Brown Mike Miller. A Charlie Brown Mike Miller? Yeah. Hmm. Why? Yeah, that's my question. <laughs> You can make, uh, if you do that, then you can make uh, Ethan Lucy with a football. <laughs> Draw stuff in, in multiple planes. I, I think you guys have confused me with somebody else. If I'm drawing something, you get a, you get a head-on, non-dynamic <laughs> static view <laughs> that, that will not obey any laws of proportion or structure. <laughs> there you go. Know your yep. limitations, right? Yes, yes. The, but I've been doing the, the Loomis book, you know, um, and doing a couple other things. I, I have no aspirations. I just would like to be able to doodle just a little bit better. That's all. Yeah. Do it, man. Do it. Do, 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 do it.
Oh, uh, it's 6.46 and dinner's not done yet. What time uh, do you have to go to... Uh, it's supposed to be at 7 o'clock. We'll see. Oh, so you've got to go here in just a little bit. Yeah. I was hoping my wife would have dinner ready at 6.30 so I could have dinner with the family before I take off all night to be on this show. But... Whatever. <laughs> how long do your how long does that order of the green hand stuff last? It's been going like four hours a shot. <sighs> and does does the audience stay for that whole thing? Yeah, last week we had fifteen hundred people watching. Wow, well, that's almost, pretty good. Almost the whole so, time. Is this the last episode? I mean, what do they what do they do now? Oh, well, I mean, they they will do more videos based on... Most of their videos are based on the books. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard the guy. Every now and then I'll check one out, and he's, he's got a nice narration voice. Yeah, he's kind of got that gravelly... Uh... <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I don't know if we'll do another Night's Watch after this. We'll talk about it. It is a fun show, but I, I I don't know if I can just dedicate week in and week out to doing that. Although it's probably growing my channel. It is because you've you've got you've got some couple of people, and people definitely recognize you when I've been over there. I see, I see that a lot of the audience is actually interacting with you. Look, it's Priest. I drew Priest. All right, Mike. I even inked this thing for you. I went all out on my Charlie Brown. You ready? <laughs> Great. Yeah. Let me shade your face just a little bit. Give you a little bit of... Give you a little bit of... I know it's a Charlie Brown. But we'll give you a little bit of depth. And bring up those cheeks. And there you go. Let's see. Make sure I've got that in focus. That's lovely. <laughs> there you go. There is a Charlie Brown Mike Miller. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, Comics Legend wants to know what's this week's D&Q topic. I was considering doing Cyberfrog. What do you think? Oh, that'd be cool. That would be cool. Yeah? What does the audience think about doing Cyberfrog this week? <laughs> I'm just looking at some of these drawing requests. <laughs> <laughs> Are you calling Mike fat? In, no, entirely possible. Entirely possible. Just Miller is just pleasantly plump. Uh, yeah, I gotta scan this in. I gotta scan this in for art, and he can he can critique my inking. <laughs> I can get my Charlie Brown Mike Miller drawn on the index card. Sure, critique sure. by the best inker in the industry. Yeah, yeah. This idea. Well. <laughs> All right, I've got about 10 minutes to uh, recoup and reform and get over to the Order of the Green Hand. So you gotta, thanks, gotta put up, you got to put up Lone Star then before you go. we got to pitch real quick. Put it up. Uh, Chrome Hangout. It'll be quick. Oops, that's your Hangout. I need to change that. Hold on. Almost at 75,000. That is fantastic. And very quickly, very quickly, if anyone is in the chat and they haven't got Lone Star, like if they missed, if they missed the first edition, if you missed Heart of the Hero, don't worry, don't worry. There is a tier right there for you, where you can also get Heart of the Hero right along with Soul of the Soldier. I've read the script all the way through. I love it. Okay, I, I keep, I keep one very close to me. I've got one here, right here, right on my streaming desk. There you go. I keep a reading copy right here. All right, and there it is. Love this. So we got to let Mike go, but definitely please go check out Soul of the Soldier. I will put that link in the chat one more time. It's a great fun series. It's what Captain America should have been. <laughs> With a twist. A bit of a twist. Yeah, go check it out. I think yeah, it's I also in the description. So, uh, yeah, we're cruising up, coming up on 75,000. Pretty cool. 
But we need to get to 100,000 so I can actually use this cover for something. <laughs> Very cool. All right, guys. Well, Art, thanks. Arch, you got to come back home with us soon, dude. I know. What's All up right. with that kid? <laughs> All right. Thanks for being on, Edwin. We'll talk to you later. Aloha. Good night, everybody. <laughs>